thought I'd do something different this time. You guys are seeing these videos of all my newer boots. Mostly a lot of purchases, sold, let me think. At least those whites, whites recently. Probably gonna sell my Overlanders. I'll be, I guess, doing a comparison between these, my, they're on my feet right now, but uh, these new Builder Pro Thurman NWs and my Overlanders, but I think I'm almost settled that there's probably no way. I'm, I'm gonna just basically wear these a few more days and then put them on, and I'm sure they're gonna feel like my foot's in a vice, my right foot especially, and I'll just need to sell them at that point. I just love that 1964 tan, but always talking about new boots. I was like, you know, maybe I'll do a video on an older pair of boots I have, not Pacific, not Pacific Northwest, uh, not a PNW, but a popular boot. Not my first pair. Well, maybe if the people like this video, I'll do another video on kind of what I'd say is my first boot that got me into like boot game. And that was a L.L. Bean Katahdin boot, which was basically a Chippewa boot. You know, it's it's made by Chippewa. I think it even said Chippewa on the inside or on the, on the sole, but it had an L.L. Bean tag. I bought it from L.L. Bean, man, 15 something years ago. This wasn't that boot. This was the second boot after. Cheers. Having some Eagle Rare, which isn't that rare, but it can be. Uh, sometimes it's really overpriced, sometimes it's not. I buy it when I can get it cheap. Oh, you know what, before I open this box. So I'm crazy and I keep my boots in their box when I'm not wearing them. This is, uh, you saw that in the little, Hawthorne. This is the Hawthorne Mole Skinner, Iron Ranger. So, these things I've had somewhere. You can see, you gotta talk about patina. So what did I say, about 14 years. Soles aren't in the worst shape, to be honest. I mean, this one, this is the one that's, I guess, a little bit more worn down as far as if you look at the, the stitching. You know, like right here. Come on, camera. Stop seeing my face. All right. You can see this stitching is gone a little bit over here. But, I mean, for the most part, it's okay. Heels, heels pretty rough as far as the... I think most people have a heel strike on the corner here. And you can see it's quite worn. But it's fine. Uh, I wouldn't... I wouldn't, I'm okay. I probably won't resole these because they don't get enough wear anymore. They've, they've been basically unworn now for years. I think I've worn these twice maybe in the past five years. Uh, one time to actually do some work. So they've, they've seen a little bit of work. You can see, you know, kind of filthy to be honest as far as like the staining on the leather. But I don't really, I mean, they're just a tough ass boot. I'm trying to make sure this camera doesn't see me here. They, I don't really have any leather left on this that looked like what they looked like new. Maybe, maybe right there, sort of. It's hard to see a little bit of that tongue, but they've gotten really dark and you know, they smoothen out. I, I don't know how to describe this. If you look at the heel, it kind of gets like the the nap gets smashed and kind of becomes almost smooth after a long time. But they're a nice boot. These are 11D. So this is, you know, a long time ago. Sizing wasn't really exactly sure. People talk about sizing a half down, which is what I did. I'm an 11 and a half D Brannock. That's heel to toe. Uh, if I want to be very specific, my heel to ball is really more like a 12. And that wasn't something I measured till more recently. Uh, I swear you go to like Nordstrom's and you know, nice, you know, fancy shoe stores to get dress shoes. That's why, you know, I'm thinking Nordstrom and I got a pair of Allen Edmonds years ago, my first like real pair of dress shoes. They only measured heel to toe. They never used the heel to ball measurement thing. 
I only learned about that later. That was negligence on those shoe salespeople or what. And then, you know, you think of like Payless or any shoe store, Foot Locker, or Champs, that kind of stuff. You know, they would just, it's always heel to toe. So I'm an 11 and a half heel to toe. That's accurate. But heel to ball, pretty much a 12. Uh, I think one of my feet is a 12. The other one's just slightly shy of it. But most people say you're supposed to use the bigger measurement. So I guess that would make me a 12. But I don't know. I guess it kind of depends. I wear 12 sneakers, but sneakers run small. Anyway, I went with an 11, 11 D, and I say I, I when I got them, I thought they were too tight. The it just felt really tight on my foot. But I actually I'm trying to remember. I think it felt even worse because I was running a super feet insole in them, which was a thin one. I was a dress shoe one. It was the thinnest they sold. The black as they they it was the black colored one. They called it the black model. It was like four dress shoes though. You'd have to buy a larger dress shoe to put an insole in it, like go up a half size. But it wasn't like a sneaker thick one with foam. It was like a hard thin foam. I think that made it my memory worse because with that insole it was just super tight. No, no volume in the kind of instep middle. It just felt like it was crushing. I felt the toe run was always okay. Uh, I mean, the bulbous toe, right? I think I felt always a little bit of a push here, but not painful. And then I never had any issues otherwise because it's such a big toe. And then uh, didn't, I don't remember any heel slip issues ever with this. But as they say, you know, when you wear these boots long enough, these have been like formed to my foot. So now they're really comfortable that you put them on, they just kind of suck onto your foot. And uh, I don't wear them much, but when I do wear them, I'm always kind of like, yeah, these freaking are like, you know, fit like a glove, as everybody says. These really do. I mean, I've been showing you this one. How about this one? This one is a, I don't know what the hell is that, gum? These ones have a little bit better thread. Oh, and by the way, take a note of this, this sole. This is the original oil resistant cork. They don't do this anymore. They do uh, like a Vibram mini lug, not like the mini lug, like Nyx or you know White's uses, but it's the same concept. It's a single piece. I think it's a dark brown like this or black if you have like the gray boots, but it, uh, it's a little bit different. I don't think it's the same product. It's pretty much the same though. I, I like this sole some ways. It kind of reminds me of the Alden 405 sole I have, the Neo cork or whatever. And it does have, you could see little bits of cork and stuff. I don't know, this, hopefully you can see some of that detail. I'm not the light screwing it up. But if you wear this in wet grass or wet mud, like I actually went hiking with my family once, nothing hardcore, but just around a, a lake nearby us. And I almost, I almost fell on my ass like five times. It was I, was, I felt like an idiot. I wore them because I didn't, I figured they'd get muddy and they did in the bottom, but then it's cool because you just go on wet grass and it just wipes right off. You don't bring a single, so I didn't bring any mud into the car at all. Whereas I was having my kids and wife like kind of, you know, clean off your, your, your mud, muddy shoes before you get in the car, get mud all over the car. Uh, so in that, that case, I was right as far as these, these were cool because they won't track mud into a house or something or your car, but they don't have any traction at all. But as far as pavement, normal stuff or dry, I always felt they were fine. Even honestly in dry dirt, they're not bad. I've gone to the, I had gone to the pumpkin patch with these several times. That, that was kind of always my thing. If I was gonna, we're going somewhere that my feet were gonna get really dusty and filthy, these have always been my go-to for that. So that's why I've only worn them a few times uh, in the last few years. Cause it's like, I don't, <laughs> I don't go to dusty, filthy places a lot. Uh, I don't work in that kind of environment. So these, I don't know, they're not really getting used. And I have so many other boots that I prefer that these kind of, look at this, look at that kind of folding and molding and patina here. Look at this. They're hard. They're really hard too. Look at this. They still, they literally still smell like they did when they were new. There's something about this Hawthorne Moleskinner, which honestly I always wished, I don't think they've ever done it. I feel like the same exact leather in this color if they had made an Iron Ranger, Hawthorne, or whatever. I don't I think this is called Hawthorne. I don't know, I'm not an expert. This is the 8113, by the way. I think you saw that on the box, potentially. But, come on, camera. Oh, uh, I, I love this tan color. I've always thought this would, be, would have been so cool. 
if they had made, come on, camera keeps seeing my face. If they had made a leather boot, the same boot, and that, that would have been cool. They always just have all their dark browns. I'm a kind of a fan of the tan. But I got these, man. I got these so long ago. I think these were $1.99 on Zappos. And I've heard, you know, people say, even though they don't say factory second on the, the box, it doesn't say seconds. That some people claim all Zappos red wings are like seconds, not being called seconds. But there's some issues. They're not... They are not symmetrical at all, and I didn't notice this until I got more paranoid when I bought the 875s. That's a pair of boots I need to sell. I don't wear them. Like, these toe caps aren't the same. It's like, if you look at them side by side, they don't end up being symmetrical at all. And then there's a lot of issues compared to expensive boots, like Nick's and stuff, where if you look at, look at the stitching, I mean, they like overlapped it so many times. Just stuff, but like, this kind of a boot, who cares? So yeah, that's my old Red Wing Iron Rangers. I feel like it's a rite of passage. You gotta end up getting these. People typically always start with a boot like this or own a pair or several pairs. Some people, some dudes really get into the Red Wing hardcore. I've seen some of these YouTube channels. These guys will have 15, 20 pairs of, of Iron Rangers, like different makeups, custom, uh, like uh, co collaboration or limited run, weird colors, European models. These are really big. Red Wing's huge in Europe. I think it's Germany specifically. But I, I thought I thought about selling them because I don't use them much. But then I'm like, it's not. I'm not going to get enough money from some filthy ass pair like this. So I think I'll just keep them. And maybe I'll wear them to the point where, if I ever had the point where the sole is delaminating, then I would consider resoling it, but I wouldn't do it any sooner than that. This is such a thick ass piece of rubber, and I feel like it's been through so much abuse. This one, this is the worst one. One of these is crazy. Like, I mean, look at the welt. They're not aligned at all. The welt's all smashed up, and they just don't separate, so. Even where the stitching's worn through, I mean, it's not, you can pull it apart slightly, but I mean, it's not going anywhere. So I don't, I guess I don't feel like the sole's ever gonna come off. So why waste the money? The heels misaligned on both of them. You can see how it shifted over. This happened pretty soon after I got them, where this kind of shifted over. I feel like I thought it happened when I was on the ladder once, putting up Christmas lights years ago, but that wasn't the case. Anyway, the, the point I was just gonna make that I was rambling about is I, I'm not keen on putting any money into these to resell them. Uh, I don't think they'll ever need it because I don't wear them enough. If that ever happens, then I'll either dump them or probably just throw them in the box in the garage and leave them there forever. But uh, I saw a really cool resole by what's this, the something and Wyatt and Dad, I think is the channel. They're cobblers. And they turned a, a nice, it was like a brand new Iron Ranger. And which I, try, I don't know. This is my weirdness. I hate watching these videos where they resoling. There's so many resole videos where these customers, and it's nothing to do with the cobblers. They're just doing work because so they're being paid. No disrespect to them. Beto and uh, one of those brothers out in Kentucky, I think. Or anyway, there's a lot of channels. But why are these customers sending in boots that literally have been worn never or like twice and getting them resold? It just seems, it just, I don't know, when I see them take it apart and they're cutting, cutting it off, the sole off and scraping out this cork that's brand new. It's just like, man, you guys should have worn the freaking boot. But that's just me. Uh, anyway, I wouldn't get these resold nice, even though I saw that video, Wyatt Dad, and they made those Iron Rangers almost look like a PNW because these are just so filthy i just feel like it's putting like money into like a just a trashed car or something like forget it it's not worth it they're kind of cool as they are too i think this is just this is red wings aesthetic this is what they wanted so yeah i'm, I'm just rambling at this point so anyway i was just curious you know if you guys thought anything of these I'm sure most of you have iron rangers everybody does like i said it's sort of a starter boot these were mine Dig them, but don't love them enough to wear them anymore. So they just sit in the box. But I don't know. Maybe I'll wear them, and then, like I said, they come out when I uh, 
I need a boot that I don't care if it gets filthy. Total rambling now, so I'll let you guys go. Later.